Hi everyone, welcome to Tech Time. Today we're going to be looking at how to use formulas in a spreadsheet. So we've been talking about uh, in previous courses how to do an actual spreadsheet, put in uh, information, and uh, one of the important things that we need to know when working with a spreadsheet and to use it effectively is how to put a formula in. So today we're going to focus all on formulas. So tune in and watch and learn all formulas today on Tech Time. Okay, for today we're going to focus on formulas and to do this I'm going to be using Microsoft Excel to show you how to use formulas. Uh, I'm only using Microsoft Excel because it is uh, kind of the in-between for all of the other uh, spreadsheet programs out there. What you'll learn today, you can apply to Google Sheets, you can apply to OpenOffice, you can even apply it to LibreOffice Calc. It's uh, all going to be the same when it comes to inputting and using a formula. So again, uh, we're using Excel just because it's the middle ground, but it will work on any spreadsheet that you decide to use. So using um, formulas in a spreadsheet all comes down to a pattern. And if you uh, learn to use the pattern, you can pretty much do any formula you want. Uh, sometimes uh, you don't even need to necessarily know what the formula is to use it. Uh, of course, it helps if you know what you're putting in and what the purpose is. But the format, the formula for inputting a um, formula into the um, spreadsheet is going to be the same. So let's talk about some quick, easy ones first, and then we'll slowly work our way up. I'm going to start by just putting in some numbers, just so we have something to play with. And I'm going to use small numbers so you can see what's happening. So I'm just going to go 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. These numbers um, I can easily add up by using a formula. All I need to do is highlight the numbers that I want to uh, input into this formula. And uh, since they are all on top of each other, I'm just going to highlight all of them here. Now, the formula we're going to use is AutoSum. AutoSum works perfect whenever you have numbers in a sequence just like this. Uh, they can be on top of each other. They can be side to side. It doesn't matter. The only requirement for the AutoSum is that they are right next to each other, as these ones are. So I highlight the numbers that I want to add. That's what auto sum does. Sum is add. And I'm just going to find my auto sum button and click on it. In Excel, it's located right here in the upper right hand corner. Uh, in uh, the other programs, it's usually found pretty close to our formula bar, which is here. And all I'm going to do is click the auto sum button and watch. So these numbers that I put in have now been added up, and the total is placed here. Now, just to give you a quick uh, recap of um, using a spreadsheet, these are going to be all of your tools that you're going to use for um, making changes to your spreadsheet. And always underneath that tool toolbar, whichever program you're using is going to have a toolbar of some sort, you will always find this information. This is our formula bar. And then we also have some uh, shortcut things that go with that formula bar. But uh, the key thing is knowing where your formula bar is because that's what's going to help when you actually input a formula. So in this formula bar, it's showing us that we are doing the sum of A1, A4. Okay. A1, A4, that's A1 right here to A4. So A1 is our first number. The colon is telling us that it's going to and then A4 so that in the formula it knows we are adding this group. So we're taking the sum, 
adding these numbers, and this is our total. Now, if I click on any of these other numbers, you'll notice that the formula bar just shows that number, and that's because that number is what I inputted. I did not input this number. This number is being generated through the formula. So it's showing me how this number is being created. Why that makes a difference is because if I were to change these numbers, it would change this number. So let's say instead of 1, I decide to put 6. Notice now that this number has changed. The formula has not. The formula is still the same. It's still given the sum of A1 through A4. But one of the numbers in the sequence has changed thus the result has changed. So this is making a formula 101. Making sure that the numbers you have inputted are the numbers you want, making sure that you're getting all the numbers there, and that your formula is doing what you want it to do. Okay. Now doing an auto sum is easy. Uh, it works anytime you have these numbers together. Let me show you. We're going to put them side by side this time. Alright, I'm going to highlight. This is what I want to auto sum. Click auto sum and then there's my result. This time it's C1 to F1. So it's starting here at C1. It's taking the numbers all the way to F1 giving me my total in G1 which is where the formula comes in. So, doing a simple addition in a formula is not a hard thing if, if the numbers are all right next to each other. What if instead I wanted to take this number from A1, this number from C1, this number from A4, and this number from F4? and add them together. As you can see, these numbers are not right next to each other. They are all very much separated. So to do this, I'm now going to have to input the formula instead of using the actual auto sum that I used earlier. Okay, the way I do this is, and this is going to be your format for doing just about any formula. So pay close attention. Watch what we're going to do. We are going to start by choosing our formula. Now I want to do sum, okay, and I'm going to do the sum, but before I do anything else, where am I going to put my total? Notice right now I'm in F1. That's not where I want my total, right? So if I were to just jump into my formula and uh, put it in, it's going to put that formula here where the box is. So, rule number one, watch your box. Figure out where your box is going to go. Where is your total going to go? Where do you need it to be? Uh, if you're doing your own spreadsheet, of course, you're going to know exactly where you need those totals. But um, for this, uh, since we're just kind of freelancing it here, I'm just going to pick a spot. We're going to put our total in D10. Okay, so this is where I want my total. Now I've placed my box, it's there. Now all I need to do is choose my formula. That's step number two. I'm going to do a sum. Now it wants to know what am I doing the sum of. Okay, I said I want to do the sum of A1. Now, since I am separating these ones out, I need commas in between to show. So I'm going to type in a comma and go to my next one, which I said was C1. Type in a comma, go to my next one, which I said was A4. Type in a comma, put in my next one, which is F1. So by using commas, I've been able to choose four different boxes. Notice that they've been, they've been given different colors to show which ones I have, where they are in my formula. That's just a helpful little thing that uh, Excel is doing for us. 
Um, some of the others do it as well, not all of them. But uh, the key thing is to check your formula. Make sure that you've got all the numbers that you want included into your formula, that you're using the correct formula. So just to recap, we placed the cursor where we want our total to be. We chose our formula, step two. Step three is we've chosen our numbers that are going to be put into the formula. And then our final step is to hit enter. And there we go. So this total is the sum of A1, C1, A4, F1. Just four random numbers I picked up here to put into a formula here. Pretty simple and easy, right? Let's try something else. Let's say I want to multiply these numbers. I want 1 times 2 times 3 times 4. Well, let's go through our steps. Step 1 is to place where it's going to go. So uh, let's put our multiplication down here in F10. That's where our total is going to go. Now we're going to go and look for our formula. So I'm going to click the drop down arrow. Now, what if the formula I'm looking for isn't here? Hmm, that could be a problem, right? Not really. In Excel and, and some of the other programs as well, it does give you a more functions option. Or, if you're having problems finding what you're looking for, you can always go to the formula tab. And there, there will be a formula tab for um, all the programs and then find the formula that you want. Sometimes the formula tab isn't a tab, but it's actually here next to the formula bar. Either way, um, find the formula that you need. In our case, we're going to multiply. Okay, that is a math thing to do. So I'm going to click on math and I'm going to look for multiply. This is in alphabetical order and I'm looking and if you're not sure what it does you can always just highlight over and it'll kind of give you a little idea of what it does now I found something but that's not multiply is it that's not multiply either hmm and none of these others look like to be multiply do you know why because in Excel and in the other spreadsheets it doesn't use the word multiply it uses the fancy math terminology. So the fancy math terminology for multiply is product, which is down here. And if you highlight, it does show you multiplies numbers given. Okay? So I want the product. Now, I want the product of what numbers? So this little box is opened up to ask me to choose what my argument is going to be. The argument is basically what numbers are going to be included in this formula. So I need to tell it which boxes to look at. So I'm going to start by clicking on the box. Oops, sorry. So I'm going to move this aside just a little bit and choose my box. So since we're just doing all four of these numbers here, I can just highlight those four numbers and it'll put those in. So it knows I want to multiply these four numbers together. Okay, I click OK. Now, notice that the value doesn't show up. And that's because this number is too big to fit in here. Because I'm going 1 times 2, and then the result of that is two time, is times 3, and then the result of that is times 4. That, that's going to create quite a big number. So, since this uh, number here isn't visible, we have to expand the space that it's in so that um, it'll show up. So I'm just going to stretch that out a little bit until we get the number to fit. Yeah. And obviously this number is way too big, so I am just going to change it. 
So in my formula, I was multiplying all four of these numbers. I'm going to delete that and start over. So again, we're going to go to Math and Trig. It'll look for product. And uh, this time, we're just going to focus on these three numbers. So 1 times 2 times 3. And there, we get a nice simple 6. So again, all I did was I placed where I want the total. I picked my formula. I chose my numbers. I said OK or hit Enter. And then I get my result. And again, it does show that this is the result of multiplying C1 to E1 here. We're going to try one more. So I'm going to do a more simple formula this time. I'm going to take these numbers here, and I'm going to do a minimum, maximum, and average of these. So I'm going to do the minimum, maximum, average. So I'm going to start with the minimum. So I'm going to go to my list here. And minimum is just NIM. And uh, the minimum is when you take a series of numbers and you get the smallest number of that series. So I've placed my box, chosen my formula, selected my numbers, I'm going to hit enter, and the smallest of this series is the 2. Now let's do the maximum. Same thing. Place my box. I choose my formula, pick my numbers, hit enter, and that's the highest number of the series. Now it's going to do an average of these numbers. So I place my box, choose my formula, pick my numbers, hit enter, and the average is 3.75. So the process for doing a formula is very simple, and as long as you know what the formula is supposed to do, you can use the formula anytime you want. And the, it'll always be the same thing. You'll place where you want the formula to go, you'll choose your formula, whether you have to go to the actual formulas and look for the one you need, or if you have a quick option for it here, you'll find your formula, You'll choose the range or the numbers that you want to include in the formula, hit enter, and you get the result. So, again, not, not hard to do, not a difficult thing. We're going to do some quick practice just so that you can uh, see this again. So I am going to close this, and I am going to open up a uh, different folder. I chose the wrong file. Okay, here we go. So I like this. Uh, it's called a money counter. It's just a, a practice program that I set up. And uh, if after you watch this you decide um, you'd like to have access to these, uh, feel free to uh, contact me, let me know, and I'll be happy to send this out to you so you can practice on your own. Uh, it does have like a timesheet where you can play around with uh, you know, putting in numbers. This is perfect practice if you want to use the autofill. And if you're not sure what autofill is, make sure you watch our spreadsheet course and you'll learn all about autofill. The money counter we're going to play with right now. There's building a calendar which is, again, uh, a lot of autofill and using that for shortcuts. And then uh, there's this one, which is a monthly cost that we're going to play with also. But uh, let's start with the money counter. So down here, it's 
kind of like a word problem if you remember those from math class. Uh, it's telling us uh, what numbers that we need to put in up here to help us figure this out. So we know that he's uh, gone into his piggy bank and that he has 68 quarters. So we're going to look for quarters and we're going to type in 68. Uh, he has 230 dimes, so we're going to choose 230 dimes, uh, 460 nickels, so we're going to type in 460 nickels, and 13 pennies, so we're going to put in 13 pennies. Okay, so these are the amounts of each coin that he has. This is already here. This is telling us what the coin is worth. So to figure out the value of how much he has, what do we have to do? Well, we got to multiply how many he has by the value of the coin to get the total that he has in his possession. So let's follow our, our steps here. Step one, we place where we want it to go. Step two, we choose our formula. This time I'm just going to go to more functions because uh, this one's going to give me um, some of the ones I've already used. And product is right there because that's what I need is to multiply. Now I'm going to choose the numbers I want to multiply. So I'm going to select the two numbers. Once I've chosen that, I'm going to say OK. So if he has 68 quarters, and the quarters are worth 25 cents a piece, that means he has $17 in quarters. All right, same thing. I need to figure out dimes, so I'm going to do the same idea. I'm going to place my box. I'm going to choose my formula. I'm going to pick my numbers and hit Enter. And there we go. So in dimes, I have $23 in dimes. Let's do it one, one more time. Place my box. Choose my formula. Pick my numbers. And there we go. Now, if uh, I was trying to do this quickly, I could just autofill this. And it'll just uh, repeat the formula I used, but for the other sets of numbers. So notice that, uh, of course, um, this is going to be the product of this number and this number to give us this number. And that's exactly what it did. All I did was autofill, so I didn't have to go through and uh, put in the formula over and over again like I was doing. And then we could go down here and do the same thing for the coins and the bills. Um, let's uh, let's just pretend that we got a total of um, twenty dollars here. Okay, we're just pretending. What about these? We gotta figure out how much these are worth, right? What's a quick way to do that? Think about what we've learned so far. That's right. We're going to select the numbers and click the auto sum. And it will automatically add these numbers together because they are already next to each other. So I didn't have to worry about placing my box and um, everything else. I just highlighted my numbers, did auto sum, and it just automatically added those for me in the next open space. All right, now I need a grand total. How much money does he have total? So I am going to take this number, add it to this number, and get my total here. So follow my steps. Place where it's going to go. Place our box. Choose our formula. So we're just going to go and choose sum. Wants to know what we want to do the sum of. I want to do this one. I'm going to use the comma. And this one. I only have two numbers in the sequence, so I'm going to end it there and just hit enter. And that's my total. Let's jump ahead to this exercise. 
It's the monthly cost exercise. And all I'm going to do is uh, come up with these blanks here. So I need to add these together to get a total. I need to get an average, a minimum, and a maximum. So since these numbers are right next to each other, I can do the easy thing and just highlight them. Choose Auto Sum and let it put my total in right there. And I can do the same thing for all of these. Just highlight, hit Auto Sum, and it'll give me that total all the way down. Or, if I don't want to go through and do it manually, since I've done it once, I can use my Auto Fill and just drag it down and just say, hey, do that same thing for all of those numbers. And as you can see, each one is doing the same thing. All right, now I need to get an average. So I need the average of all of these numbers. Follow my steps. I place my box, choose my formula. Now I choose my numbers. Make sure you only get the ones that are here. We don't want to include the total. Hit enter. That's the average of these numbers. Minimum, same thing. I place my box. Choose my formula. Select my numbers. Hit enter. That's the minimum. For the maximum, same thing. Place my box. Choose my formula. Choose my numbers. Hit enter. And there's my maximum. And same thing for filling this in. I can just auto fill all the way down. And it'll repeat that formula for each and every one. Auto fill down. And repeat the formula for each one. One more time. I'm going to auto fill down. And the formula repeats for each one. So I have now very quickly and successfully filled in all the totals, the average, the minimum, and maximum. And then I can top it off by finishing it down here. Same process, place my box, pick my formula, choose my numbers, and that's it. So working with formulas is not a hard mystery in spreadsheets. It's just a matter of knowing what you need to do. Pick where the formula is going to go. Place your box. Choose the formula that you want. Select the numbers going into the formula. Hit enter or OK. And then just watch the program do the rest. So I hope you have some fun uh, working with formulas on your own. Feel free to try and experiment with different things, different ways. Um, trust me, the more you practice, the easier it gets. So thank you for tuning in today for Tech Time, and catch us as we learn more on the next Tech Time.